Namaste. Down about Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 2, The Cosmic Manifestation, Chapter 3, Text 16. Vayashikis cha bhagavan vasudeva parayana urugaya gunodhara satam shurhi samagame. Sukadev Goswami, the son of Yasadev, was also full in transcendental knowledge and was a great devotee of Lord Krishna, son of Vasudev. So there must have been discussion of Lord Krishna, who is glorified by great philosophers and in the company of great devotees. Purport. The word satam is very important in this sense, uh, in this verse. Satam means the pure devotees <clears throat> who have no other desire than to serve the Lord. Only in the association of such devotees are the transcendental glories of Lord Krishna properly discussed. It is said by the Lord that his topics are all full of spiritual significance, and once one properly hears about him and the association of the satam, certainly one senses the great potency and so automatically attains to the devotional stage of life. As already described, Maharaj Parikshit was a great devotee of the Lord from his very birth, and so was Shukadev Goswami. Both of them were on the same level, although it appeared that Maharaj Parikshit was a great king, accustomed to royal facilities, whereas Shukadev Goswami was a typical renouncer of the world. So much so that he did not even put a cloth on his body. Superficially, Maharaj Parikshit and Shukadev Goswami might seem to be opposites, but Basically, they were unalloyed devotees, pure devotees of the Lord. When such devotees are assembled together, there can be no topics save discussions of the glories of the Lord or bhakti yoga. And Bhagavad Gita also, when there were talks between the Lord and his devotee Arjuna, there could not be any topic other than bhakti yoga. However, the mundane scholars may speculate on it in their own ways. The use of the word cha after yashaki suggests, according to Srila Jiva Goswami, that both Sukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit were of the same category, settled long before, although one was playing the part of the master and the other of the disciple. Since Lord Krishna is the center of the topics, the word Vasudeva Parayana, or the devotee of Vasudev, suggests a devotee of Lord Krishna, the common aim. Although there were many others who assembled at the place where Maharaj Parikshit was fasting, the natural conclusion is that there was no topic other than the glorification of Lord Krishna. Because the principal seeker was Shukadev, Goswami and the chief audience was Maharaj Parik, uh, the, the principal speaker was Sukadev Goswami, and the chief audience was Maharaj Parikshit. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, as it was spoken and heard by two principal devotees of the Lord, is only for the glorification of the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Text 17. Ayur Harati Vai Pumsam Udyan Astam Chayanaso. Both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. This verse indirectly, uh, this is the purport now. This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized. 
for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity, Jiva, so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of a living entity. But he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. A living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole, and his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spirit whole, and his name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes into contact with any one of the above-mentioned energies of the Lord, through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita 2.40, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. Endeavors in devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord injected to the ear by the devotee, by the pure devotee of the Lord, can act very efficiently. Oral realization of the transcendental messages implies total realization just as the fructification of one part of a tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Shukadeva Goswami prepares one's complete life for eternity. And thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life in as much as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age, and disease. The materialistic way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Smriti Shastras as quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-brahmana without brahminical qualification, the money is returned to the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to half-educated brahmana, even then the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda Paraga, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita by Daish Chasarvara Hameva Vedya. There is a guarantee of monies being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental messages of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life for returning home back to Godhead. Madam Gatva Punar Janma Na Vidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Text 18. Tarhava kim na jivanti, vastra kim na svashantutu, na kadhanti na mehanti, kim gramme pasha vopare. Do the trees not live? Do the bellows of the blacksmith not breathe? All around us do the beasts not eat and discharge semen? Purple. 
The materialistic man of all the modern age will argue that life or part of it is never meant for discussion of theosophical or theological arguments. Life is meant for the maximum duration of existence for eating, drinking, sexual intercourse, making merry and enjoying life. A modern man wants to live forever by the advancement of material science. And there are many foolish theories for prolonging life to the maximum duration. But the Srimad Bhagavatam affirms that life is not meant for so-called economic development or advancement of materialistic science for the hedonistic philosophy of eating, mating, drinking, and merrymaking. Life is solely meant for tapasya, for purifying existence, so that one may enter into eternal life, into eternal life, just after the end of the human form of life. The materialists want to prolong life as much as possible because they have no information of the next life. They want to get the maximum comfort in this present life because they think conclusively that there is no life after death. This ignorance about the eternity of the living being and the change of covering in the material world has played havoc in the structure of modern human society. Consequently, there are many problems multiplied by various plans of modernized men. The plans for solving the problems of society have only aggravated the troubles. Even if it is possible to prolong life more than 100 years, advancement of human civilization does not necessarily follow. The Bhagavatam says that certain trees live for hundreds and thousands of years. At Vrindavan, there is a tamarind tree, a place is known as Imlitala, which is said to have existed since the time of Lord Krishna. In the Calcutta Botanical Garden, there is a banyan tree said to be older than 500 years, and there are many such trees all over the world. Swami Shankaracharya lived only 32 years, and Lord Chaitanya lived 48 years. Does it mean that the prolonged lives of the above-mentioned trees are more important than Shankara or Chaitanya? Prolonged life without material, uh, without spiritual value is not very important. One may doubt that trees have life because they do not breathe, but modern scientists like Bose have already proved that there is life in plants, so breathing is no sign of actual life. The Bhagavatam says that the bellows of the blacksmith breathes very soundly, but that does not mean the bellows has life. The materialist will argue that life in the tree and life in the men cannot be compared because the tree cannot enjoy life by eating palatable hogs living in the same village with human beings. So, the materialist will argue that life in the tree and life in the man cannot be compared because the tree cannot enjoy life by eating palatable dishes or by enjoying sexual intercourse. In reply to this, the Bhagavatam asks whether other animals like the dogs and the hogs living in the same village with the human beings do not eat and enjoy sexual life. The specific utterance of Srimad Bhagavatam in regard to, quote, other animals means that persons who are simply engaged in planning a better type of animal life consisting of eating, breathing, and mating are also animals in the shape of human beings. A society of such polished animals cannot benefit suffering humanity, for an animal can easily harm another animal, but rarely do good. Thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text 19 on Friday, hopefully. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru Dev Srila Achari Dev Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to our Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees Ki Jai. All glories to the worldwide devotees Ki Jai. Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadweep Dam Ki Jai Mayapur Dam Ki Jai Nishungapuri Dam Ki Jai Jai Jagannath Puri Dam Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dam Ratha Yatra Ki Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ju Ki Jai Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dam Ki Jai Shyam Kund Radha Kund Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai Nitai Gora Pramanundi Hari 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 Bo Dhanavapranam